Hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Professor S R Patil, Department of uh, Information Science and Engineering, BLD ACT, Vijayapura. Today I am going to teach functions concept in C programming. Functions concept plays very important role in C programming. Functions can also be called sub programs. As we know, every C program permits the programmer to make use of only one main function to solve a problem so we'll see the introduction of functions today first one is built-in functions so what do you mean by built-in function hence as i told you like every c programmer permits the programmer to make use of only one main function to solve a problem hence it is very difficult for the programmer to solve a large and complex problem by using a single main function with only built-in functions so that is why we go with the functions concept okay here the programmers need to write to their own functions here what the programmer does is going to write the own functions as i told you functions can also be called sub programs okay to do a specific divided task these sub programs written by programmers are called sub programs or it is also called user defined function so why user defined function because user written functions are there okay user is going to write the function based on his requirement okay that is why it is also called it as a user defined function or we can also call it as a modules okay the one more concept that is the programming approach so what do you mean by programming approach programming approach in which the given large and complex problem will be divided into many sub programs and are called by main function to do a specific task is called modular programming approach or simply we call it as a programming approach okay so this is a brief introduction about functions so in uh, in the next slide we can see what is the definition of the function and what are the advantages of the function so first we'll see the definition the definition of the function that is a function can be defined as sub program that also contains group of statements to do a specific task okay so what do you mean by function function is a group of it is defined as a sub program that also contains a group of statements to do a specific task so what are the tasks which you are going to see uh, which we are going to do that we can see later so before that we can see the advantages of a uh, functions okay so these are the some of the advantages which i have listed here so the first advantage is that reduction in the size of the main function so how we can say that reduction in the size of the main means so in the main function we used to write many number of lines or you can say set of instructions okay if you don't make use of functions the line of the program code will be like it can be reached more than 100 also okay so if you make use of the function concept okay we are just calling the function in the main okay so I'll, I'll i'll tell you later okay what is a calling function and call function as of now you just try to understand that if you don't use the function concept okay the size of the main will be more understood if you make use of the function concept then there is a reduction in the size of the main function with an example we can see how it reduces okay then reusability of the written functions reusability means once you write the function the same function can be called more than one time suppose like there is a sum function is there okay sum means one summation of the two numbers okay so when you take that when you write that sum function okay it is not only applicable for only one time okay you can make use of many times that is what we call it as a reusability next is program maintenance testing and debugging is easier okay so this we can see later maintenance testing and debugging how it is easier 
okay then function can be shared among many c files so you have gone through in the previous class that is the c program that is machine independent it means that once you write the pro program okay in one computer the same program can be executed in a another computer as well so similarly here the functions can be shared among many c files then fifth advantage is that programmers can create their own functions li functions library like header files okay so based on the programmer requirement he can create their own functions and he perform a task then the last advantage that is modular programming approach so as i told you modular programming approach means the complex problems okay to reduce the complex problem we make use of the function concept so that the complex problem will be reduced and we can execute the programs understood so we have gone through what is the definition of the function and what are the advantages of the function then there are mainly two types of functions are there one is built in functions another one is user defined function so what do you mean by built in function the functions designed and developed by c developers remember this so these are the functions which are designed and developed by whom c developers are called built in function or it can also be called predefined function okay the example for the built in functions or predefined functions are scanf printf get ch power this is uh, used for the power square root malloc string length string copy okay so these are the function are what pre predefined or we can also call it as a built in function remember built in functions are designed and developed by whom c developers okay fine user defined functions the name itself will tell okay so the functions written by whom programmer remember this the functions are written by programmer whereas built in functions are designed and developed by c developers okay there is a difference between developer and a programmer so end user he writes the program okay those we call it as a programmer okay programmer are called user defined functions the example for the user defined functions are is prime factorial that is fact string copy uh, listen here string copy we have used here also okay we just check it out the spelling s t r c p y so this is a string manipulating function or a string handling function this is predefined but string copy here we are used so this is copying two strings but this is a user defined function okay sort this is used for the sorting the function it can be a, 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 a like selection sort merge sort many are there okay uh, uh, sorting in ascending order sorting in descending order okay so those programs we can see later so these are the function and sum okay sum of the two number summation of a two number can be like uh, executed by calling this sum function so these all are what user defined function okay hope you can understand there are two types of function built in function and user defined function and example for the same okay so move on to the next slide elements of user defined function this is important concept elements of user defined function there are three main elements are there function declaration or we can also call it as a function prototype second one is function call and third one is function definition okay so we'll see one by one how each of the element that works okay so the first one is what function declaration and it can also be called it as a function prototype so what do you mean by function declaration so we have seen the declaring the variable uh, declaring the, the array and all okay so declaration with respect to function concept so how we can declare that the function must be declared in the global declaration part of the c program before the main function okay so this is similar as a like we have gone through the declaration part with respect to array and all the function must be declared in the global declaration global declaration means what before the main function okay so uh, global declaration part of the c program that is before the main function okay we can see the syntax 
the syntax for function declaration is return type function name argument list okay so here return type it can be the data type of return value like integer floating point character double etc by default the return type will be what it is integer okay the next is function name function name is it is a valid identifier you can give any function name uh, with respect it makes some sense okay if you are adding two number you add our summation understood if you are going to find the factorial of number then you fact okay then next the third one is what argument list argument list is nothing but what number of inputs or a parameters passing to the function that is what we call it as a argument list so this is a syntax for the function declaration so once we see the example you'll get an idea how this syntax works okay just look at this there are how many examples are there three are there okay we can see the first one int sum okay int sum int is what return type sum is what function name and what is this int x int y argument list okay so here what we are going to do we are going to do the to find the sum or addition of the two number here two numbers are nothing but x and y so we are going to find the summation of the two number by using the function name sum understood okay then second example that is float area float x okay so here float is a return type area is a function name float x is a argument list we are going to pass only one argument list that is to find the area of the circle okay then third example that is is prime so to check is prime i required one variable or a one number that is fine okay so that is why i am passing only one argument to this is prime function so here int is a return type is prime is what that is a function name int x is a argument so this function that is for to check of a prime number okay suppose if i give the example x value is equal to what 7 so is 7 prime number or not yes or no okay to check that yes 7 is a prime number why because why it is a prime number the number which is divisible by 1 and itself that number is call it as a prime number isn't it okay we have seen the uh, pro programming example for prime number in the previous class okay so these are what example for the pri uh, i mean uh, functions okay the next the second element of uh, function is that is function call okay the first one we have seen that function prototype or a function declaration then second one is what function call okay so what do you mean by function call here the user defined function is called by the main function to do specific task by passing the number of inputs okay i'll repeat once again user defined function is called by whom main function to do a specific task by passing the number of inputs number of inputs is nothing but like argument list okay so here the example just check with the example so before we see the example we can okay we'll see the example now uh, wide main this is a main function okay within this remember function call always be inside the main function okay so answer 1 We, this is a like variable temporary variable square is a function what is this square is a function name n is what num n is a argument list okay so uh, how many value which you are going to uh, like pass this suppose the n value is 2 okay so what is the square of the 2 2 will be 4 isn't it so this is a function call then second variable that is cube okay second variable answer 2 and the function name is cube if i pass the n value 2 what is the cube 2 raised to 3 that is how much 8 okay so here function i am talking about the function call the function call is the function name cube and function name square which i have written inside the main function okay that is wide main function so this is how the function call works so what happens when you call this function the control will automatically go to this particular square function when you call this cube function 
the control will automatically go to queue function okay so queue function that is again a sub program there we are going to write the logic of the program okay that we can see later so you have understood here what is function call next third element that is what function definition okay function definition so here this is the sub program which can be written before or after the main function remember this this is what sub program which can be written before the main function or after the main function not within the main function within the main function only function call okay so before and after the main function that is function definition it also contains the group of statements to do specific task okay so here the example for the function definition is int sum int x comma int y okay so here the function definition here sum is there okay so sum when we call that function like here we have the square and cube similarly imagine that sum is there when you call the sum here what happens the it will come to the function definition in the function definition okay so this is the syntax first we'll see the syntax okay this is the syntax return type function name and argument list okay so here return type is what integer okay so function name is what sum argument list is what int x comma int y okay so here finally we are going to return the value that is x plus y so this is what return value okay understood this is a syntax and that is a example it's very simple for summation of two numbers first we are going to write the return type name of the function and argument list here inside we are going to write the logic of the program x plus y okay so that is addition of two numbers we are we need to perform that is why we have written the x plus y in the previous case case okay here written x plus y this is what function definition so we'll see one simple example programming example that is to find sum of two numbers by using the function okay listen so here this is a header file and what is this this is what function prototype okay this is function prototype function prototype it is like defined before the main function or before the uh, main function we can call it as a global declaration okay so here execution of the main function it start from the main okay so int n1 n2 answer i have declared three variable here so i am performing which operation sum operation of course i require two numbers are two variable the two variables are what n1 and n2 the result i am going to store it in a answer variable that is why i have taken answer as well okay clear screen then print f enter any two numbers i need to enter two numbers from the keyboard so this can have statement that is for what reading the two numbers okay so here answer that is equal to listen carefully sum of n1 comma n2 what is this this is a function call okay there are three elements i have told you right so this is a function call and this is a function prototype and function definition i'll tell okay all the three it covers so function call we have seen that function call always it should be within the main function okay so answer is a variable okay here sum of n1 comma n2 when I, when we perform this operation whatever the result will come that result will be stored into the answer value okay so when control comes here what happens immediately the control will move to the what sum function okay so before executing this printf so when control comes here in sum int x comma int y this is function definition function definition can be written before the main function or after the main function okay so what is the operation which you are going to perform here return x plus y okay x plus y is nothing but what summation of the two numbers okay imagine that the x value is 10 okay and y value is 20 okay so summation of the two number will be 10 plus 20 that is 30 so 30 will be stored where here answer okay so when we call this function it will perform the operation it will come back and it will store the value 30 in the answer finally addition is answer it is going to print the 
30 as a summation of two numbers. So here just check it out the output. Here we have taken the two numbers, enter any two numbers, x value is 7 and y value is 3. Isn't it? Okay. So here when you perform the sum operation, so it will perform return x plus y adding both the number x and y that is 7 plus 3. The result will be 10. Okay. 10 I am going to display. Understood this? So in this programming example, I have covered all the three elements, function prototype, function call, then function definition. Understood? Fine. Move on to the one more example, a simple example. Here, to find the square and cube of a number by using the function. Okay. You know what do you mean by square and what do you mean by cube? Okay. So here. Uh, wide mean then uh, I, of course I required uh, at least one number okay suppose uh, to check the uh, square of the number two or uh, to check the cube of the number two okay so I required one variable answer one and answer two are the variable which I am going to store the uh, square value in one of the variable and the cube value in one of the variable isn't it okay so enter a number so I need to enter a number okay so where uh, this is for reading the number okay suppose I have entered the number 2 fine next I need to perform the operation that is answer 1 this variable contains the like answer of square of n okay square of n is nothing but I am going to pass only one argument here n value is equal to 1 okay any one number okay square is what function name okay so here function call I am calling the function Similarly, answer to variable which contains an answer after performing the cube operation. In here, I'm going to pass only one argument. Cube is a function name. Okay. So these two are what? Function call. Okay. So immediately after these two, this printf will not execute. Remember this. Okay. So what it does when you call this function, control automatically go to the square function. Okay. Here, this is a square function. So this is a function definition. So I have taken int x only one value. Why? Because I'm passing only one argument over there. That is why I have taken int x. Isn't it? Don't get confused. I have not taken int x comma int y. Why? Because in the previous case, I have taken, I have taken only argument that is n. Okay. And n is nothing but only one value. Isn't it? Okay. So int square int x, I'm performing the operation. What is this? Return x into x x into x is nothing but what 2 into 2 okay 2 into 2 that is nothing but 4 that is a value which you are going to return okay so just check it out the output enter a number you have entered the value 2 okay square is how much 2 into 2 that is 4 okay so similarly cube operation so cube operation it contains only one argument okay it return x into x into x this is nothing but x cube okay so the x value is 2 2 into 2 into 2. How much? 2 into 2, 4. 4 into 2, 8. Okay. So the cube is 8. So after performing these two operations, the control will come back here. Okay. And it will assign the value that is square of the number 2. That is how much? 4 here and 8 here. Finally, I am going to print the square is how much? Answer 1 contains the 4. Cube is how much? 8. Answer 2 contains 8. So Finally, we have got the result. So this is the output for the program. Understood? Okay. Move on to next. That is uh, actual and formal parameter. Okay. So this is important concept. Actual and formal parameters. On this, you can expect one question. So what is actual parameter and what is formal parameter? Explain with an example. Okay. The inputs, whichever we pass to function, to do specific task are called parameters or arguments. So argument list we have seen in the previous syntax, one of the syntax. So it means that the inputs, like whichever we pass to functions to do a specific task, it depends upon the application. It depends upon the task. If I, I would like to find the square of the number, I required only one argument, isn't it? If I would like to find the factorial also, I required one number. Okay, if suppose I need to find the summation of the two number, of course I require two number. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so that is how we are going to pass the argument or a parameter. 
there are mainly two parameters are there one is actual parameter then another one is formal parameter okay so we'll see what is actual parameters actual parameters the parameters passed during the function call in the main function are called actual parameter understood the parameters passed during the function call in the main function are called actual parameter these actual input data pass to a user defined function to do specific task so to do a specific task what we are going to do we are going to pass the input data without input data we cannot able to perform the task okay the contents of actual parameters will be copied to formal parameters of a function remember this the content of actual parameters will be copied to formal parameters of a function okay we'll see one example you'll get an idea how we are going to copy the actual parameter into the formal parameter okay so we can see formal parameters also what do you mean by formal parameters the parameters used in the function header of function definition or function prototype are called for formal parameter okay so the parameter which we are going to use within the main function that is actual parameter the parameter which we are going to use the function definition are called formal parameter okay so these parameters receive input data for processing from the actual parameters from the calling function okay these parameter what it does which receives the input data for processing from the actual parameters from the calling function the changes made this is very important remember this the changes made to formal parameters do not affect the content of actual parameter okay the changes made to formal parameters do not affect the content of actual parameter so how it does not affect that we can see here this is an example okay so in this example i have explained the actual parameter as well as formal parameter okay here example for actual parameter as well as the formal parameter that is this is a header file has into stdio.h okay so here y test in text comma int y okay what is this this is a function prototype okay so here we are going to declare a function prototype before that we are going to use within the main function remember this okay so this is a main function execution of the main function uh, function always start from the main int x x is equal to 7 y is equal to 3 okay so i have taken two variable x and y so value of x is 7 and value of y is 3 okay clear screen so here before calling function what are the value of the actual parameter okay so we are going to print here x value what is the x value 7 okay so what is the y value 3 okay just look at the output here before calling function actual parameter value will be x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 3 understood till here it's very simple here i have taken two variable x value is equal to 7 and y value is equal to 3 okay so before calling the function actual parameter value will be x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 3 okay next here i am calling the function what is the name of the function name of the function is test okay test of x comma y so here x and y are the argument test is a name of the function here x and y are call it as a actual parameter why it is actual parameter because this is a function call so whatever the argument which i am going to use within the function call those parameters are call it as a actual parameter remember this okay so this is a function call so when i call this function okay the next statement is printf printf it is not going to execute what it is it is going to perform it is going to execute the test function okay so test function so sorry fine so here will be having so before the interruption ha huh. so i was talking about this test function okay immediately control will go to the test function 
Okay, so this is a continuation part of the previous program. Y test, what is this here? Y test is a function. Okay, so I am passing these two argument. Okay, so these two argument are nothing but are a parameter, nothing but what? Formal parameter. X and Y are formal parameter here because I am going to write the function this function y test function so this function contains the parameter these parameter are called as a formal parameter so i'm going to perform the operation here x plus plus and y plus plus okay remember so what is the value of x x value it was seven y value is three okay so after performing the increment operation what might be the value of x eight because seven is incremented by one that is eight so what is the value of y? Y it was three. Now the y value becomes four, isn't it? So inside the function, the formal parameter value will be so x value what eight, y value is four. Okay. So here inside the function, the formal parameters value of x is eight and value of y is four. Okay. Understood this? So this is when I call the function. When it perform the operation, the value of x is eight and value of y is equal to four. Listen, after this function, so here after calling function actual parameter, so this value of x and y changed in the formal parameter. Okay, so formal parameter, this increment operation is going to uh, takes place. That is why the formal parameter value has been changed from seven to eight and three to four. Okay. So after calling function actual parameter, the value of x that is remains seven and value of y that is remains three, because inside the main function I am not going to do any operation, any increment operation. Okay, so that is why after the calling function actual parameter value will be that is x is equal to seven and y is equal to three. Okay, so what do you got to know from this program? Okay, so from this here. The changes made to formal parameters do not affect the content of actual parameter. Okay, the, what changes we have made to the formal parameter? We have done the increment operation. Okay, so does it affect on the actual parameter? No. Okay, how we can say that it doesn't affect because the value remains same. That is x is equal to seven and y is equal to three. Okay, so that is what I would like to convey this. Okay, so this is simple program. So. With this, uh, in today's uh, class, I have completed function uh, classification, function definition, then um, types of the function and types of the parameter, actual and formal parameter. And uh, in today's class, uh, you can uh, expect a question that is define function and explain a declaration of the function with an example and uh, actual difference between actual and formal parameter with an example. Okay. Thank you so much.